Welcome back to Askewed Reviews, and this week we are doing a theme week, and it's 80s fantasy movies. So today we are doing the 1986 adventure fantasy musical Labyrinth. Here is your trivia question for today. What actor or actress from a Star Trek TV series was a dance choreographer for this film? The answer will be at the end of this episode. Our story starts with Sarah, who's in a park rehearsing for a play aptly named Labyrinth. Unfortunately, a storm starts and she runs back home. Now her father and stepmother are wanting to go out for the night, and they need her to watch her stepbrother Toby. She unfortunately does not like Toby. So just like in the play that she's rehearsing for, she begins to request for the goblins to come and take her brother away. Unfortunately for her, the goblins are listening. An owl bursts through the window, but it's actually not an owl, it's Jareth, the Goblin King, that has a deal for her. He won't actually take away her brother if she can traverse the labyrinth and find him in his palace in the middle. While trying to traverse the labyrinth, she does make some friends in Hoggle, Ludo, and Sir Didymus. Unfortunately for her, she also runs into a lot of other creatures that either might be helping or hindering her progress. Now, will Sarah make it to the center of the labyrinth, or will Jareth keep the baby and turn it into a goblin? Now, the story for Labyrinth is loosely based off of the book Outside Over There by Maurice Sendak. Maurice Sendak also made the book Where the Wild Things Are, which also a lot of inspiration of what creatures looked like came from that. And of course, there's very similar story and tone with the books The Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland. This movie had a lot of great people working on it. For instance, Jim Henson was the director, Terry Jones from Monty Python and the Flying Circus wrote the script, and George Lucas was actually the producer. David Bowie did an amazing job as Jareth, but there were some other actors that were up for the role as well, including Kevin Kline, Simon McCorkendale, and even Michael Gothard. Now once they realized they wanted a rock star as Jareth, other possibilities were Michael Jackson, Prince, Mick Jagger, and Sting, but it was actually Henson's own kids that talked him into going with David Bowie because of his popularity at the time. Jennifer Connelly was very lucky to get the role of Sarah. There was actually quite a few other actresses that were up for the role as well, including Helena Bonham Carter, Jane Krakowski, Yasmeen Bleef, Sarah Jessica Parker, Mary Stuart Masterson, Laura Dern, Maddie Corman, Carrie Green, Lily Taylor, Laura San Giacomo, Ali Sheedy, Marissa Tomei, Trini Alvarado, and even Mia Sara. Here's an interesting piece of information for you. Legend and Labyrinth were being filmed at the same time right near each other. While this was happening, a lot of the cast of both movies got to intermingle. Now, Brian Henson apparently gained a bit of a crush on Mia Sara, so much so that years later, they started a date and eventually got married. Also, by the way, Brian Henson is the one who does the voice for Hoggle in this film. You are probably well aware that the baby in this film is named Toby, but did you know that the original name in the script was Freddy? They had to change it because the baby would not react or look at anyone unless they said his actual name. And this baby is Toby Froud, who is the son of Brian Froud, who is the conceptual designer that worked on both this film and The Dark Crystal. This will probably come as no surprise to you, but they use the same dog for Ambrosius and for Merlin in this film. Now, what's interesting is the way that they got the name of both of the dog characters is there was a book called The History of the Kings of Britain, where the character, the sorcerer Merlin, is in that book, and his full name is Merlin Ambrosius. So it's never actually stated in the film, but at one point in the script, they had it that the junk lady was actually going to be Jareth's mother. So while re-watching this film, I had a bit of a theory, and maybe this is actual canon, but I just didn't see this anywhere. The sequence where the junk lady just starts putting stuff onto Sarah, it only just occurred to me, what if that's where junk ladies come from? Is just another one piles stuff onto someone until eventually they're overtaken by that. I don't know. Maybe that's already the way it is, but I just noticed it and thought it was fascinating. So you may or may not already know this, but any time that the Goblin King is doing contact juggling, that's not actually David Bowie doing it. There is a famous juggler named Michael Moschen who is actually just reaching his arm through the robes or costume of David Bowie, and it's actually his arm and hand that are doing the juggling. 
Here are some things you may not have known about the dance magic scene. For instance, there are 48 Muppets, 52 puppeteers, and 8 people in goblin costumes throughout the whole sequence. Also, anytime you hear the baby gurgling during the song, that's actually just David Bowie making that noise. The animated owl that you see during the beginning title sequence is actually the first attempt in a photorealistic CGI animal in a feature film. There were over a hundred latex hands created for the helping hand scene. Now here are where things get interesting. Here are all the foreshadowing items that are in Sarah's bedroom. Ludo and the cleaner's machine appear as a stuffed animal and some sort of record or poster. Hoggle appears as a bookend, and you can also see books like The Wizard of Oz, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and even Grimm's Fairy Tales. There is one fiery that shows up as a stuffed animal. Sir Didymus, Sarah's dress, and even the hedge maze all show up. There is the Sir Didymus stuffed animal, Sarah's dress appears in the music box, and there's a variation of the actual marble game Labyrinth that has it look more like the hedge maze. The room in the Goblin King's castle that has the stairs going every which way is definitely a reference to the M.C. Escher drawing called Relativity that shows up in the back of Sarah's room. In the bedroom, there's actually two David Bowie references. Number one, there's a figurine which looks a lot like the Goblin King. And number two, if you look on Sarah's mirror, there's a picture of a woman and David Bowie together. What this is, is the woman is actually Sarah's mother, and David Bowie is the man that managed to take her mother away from this family. Adds a whole nother level to the Goblin King looking like him, doesn't it? Now this last reference I just have to point out because it's very nerdy and I'm a huge nerd. There's a Dungeons and Dragons book on Sarah's bookshelf. Now if you can't get enough of the movie Labyrinth, there's a ton of ways to still be able to enjoy it. There's lots of different options when it comes to comic books. There are two video games, one that came out for the Commodore 64, and one that only came out in Japan for the Nintendo Entertainment System. There are multiple board and card game variations, a tabletop RPG. There are a bunch of different book options, including the novelization of the film, which has a bunch of different scenes that are quite different from the movie. There's even a book called The Goblins of the Labyrinth, which goes really in depth to all the creatures, even kids' books. So I absolutely love the movie Labyrinth. In my opinion, it's a must-see movie from the 80s that everyone should watch at least once. Now, I do think the acting that David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly portray in this film isn't that great, but I do believe Jennifer Connelly has gotten much better over time. But I'm still going to give this movie a 5 out of 5, as it is a great movie, and I'll remember scenes from it probably for the rest of my life. Now, as for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode, what actor or actress from a Star Trek TV series was a dance choreographer for this film? It was Cheryl McFadden, and you might know her a bit better by her other stage name, Gates McFadden, on Star Trek The Next Generation, where she portrayed the character of Dr. Beverly Crusher. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews. If there's a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe.